St Thomas's and Great Ormond Street Hospital came up with the idea to take 3D copies of the kidney of Dad Chris Boucher and the abdomen of his then two-year-old daughter Lucy in an innovative step before the operation in November last year. Speaking in the first broadcast interview, let's talk to Chris Boucher then, his wife Cara and Lucy who's now turned three from their home in Antrim in Northern Ireland and the surgeon who came up with the idea Pankaj Chandal is with us in the studio too. Right, good morning everybody. Thank you so much for coming on the programme. Um, Chris, Cara, just explain to us what the situation with Lucy was and why she needed a kidney transplant. Um, well, basically Lucy was um, born um, healthy and, and everything seemed fine right throughout pregnancy. But then at four weeks um, old she had massive heart failure. We basically went to lift her in the morning and she was a ghostly white, her lips were kind of going blue and my wife basically just bundled her up and rushed her up to the hospital which thankfully is just, just about five minutes from us. But immediately they identified that she was in massive heart failure and then throughout that, that day she was moved to the Royal in Belfast from Antrim but throughout that day it became clear that they couldn't do, do anything for her to save her here so she was um, transferred to Newcastle in England to the Freeman's Heart Unit and um, she was put on an ECMO machine which gave her heart then a chance to recover from the heart failure but as a result of the um, heart, the massive heart failure and the oxygen starvation her kidneys um, stopped working and didn't really start working again so she had to um, basically go on daily dialysis and it was um, that was the first time actually she was involved in pioneering um, medical breakthroughs because a, a retired kidney um, doctor there called Malcolm Coulthard had just invented a machine to uh, hemodialyze, so dialyze through the blood, yes. um, tiny children, because she was only three kilograms um, at that point, and um, she needed that machine daily. And it basically then, through a lot of ups and downs, um, and we were in Newcastle then for the next eight months, um, that machine, the Nidus machine, um, saved her life basically, um, because there was no other form of di dialysis that she could have at her size because she also had stomach damage due to the heart failure and um, it had just been recently invented and it's still in its, its development and Lucy actually has helped develop that machine a good bit from what they, they learned off her right. but basically we were there for the next eight, eight months and then had ongoing normal dialysis here when she was the right size for that and, uh, and then up until she got to the point where she was big enough to have the transplant which was just there in November um, uh, of, of last year uh, you, uh, brilliantly explained, so that's why Chris. She needed this new kidney. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> nice. and 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 oh, yeah. said in such that's, a. That's two years in a nutshell. <laughs> I know, absolutely, uh, and said in such a pragmatic way, <laughs> Cara. I wonder if it was uh, as straightforward as Chris has just made it sound. <laughs> no, there were lots of ups and downs along the way. Um, there were, I mean, from from the day that she took ill, um, we were told when we were leaving our our local hospital in Antrim. Um, to say goodbye to her because she may not make the journey to Belfast, which is a journey that we make like countless times in a week. Mm. So there were plenty of ups and downs. Um, there were, when they had tried um, about four months after she first took sick um, to reverse her stoma and try peritoneal dialysis, um, and, and that didn't work. Um, she had too many adhesions. So at that point we were told that she had been between a rock and a hard place and um, now we were told that she was between a rock and a hard place and the devil and the deep blue sea. Um, and then down to the team that developed the dialysis machine further. Is she taking your temperature? Um, they, she is taking my temperature. She's turned into quite the little medic. Oh, <laughs> Chris, is, are you alright? Is your temperature alright? I, I need to know. <laughs> Well, well, worryingly, she always tells me it's 85, so that's oh, wow. a good look. I, I don't know where she's got 85 from, but it's that's, just a that's nice big good. number, I suppose, so, isn't yes, it? There, there have been. <coughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> there, there have been plenty of of hard things along the way. Yeah. Um, thankfully for us, you know, we have had brilliant medical teams in five different hospitals who have worked with her yeah. and got her to where she is today. Um, and once she came back from Newcastle and was on dialysis for a full two years here. Um, on the standard machine, like, she did brilliantly on it. Um, you know, they would comment that she she didn't act like a child on dialysis. She would no. go in and she'd play, and she was quite happy to see the nurses. Yes, um, chef, chef. Oh. A 
That's only four? Oh dear. <laughs> Have you said hello yet? You should say hello. Turn around and say hello. Hi Lucy. Say hello, hello gorgeous. How are you? I don't, you mm -hmm. can't see me waving, but I'm going to wave anyway. Hello, lovely. You look so <laughs> happy you and healthy. Give a nice to you. Good girl. Yes. Um, so, I mean, the, the nurses, the nurses in the Royal Hospital in Belfast, really, over the last two years, have been kind of more like honorary aunties to her really? that, that she's seen so much during the week. Yeah. So, we, we are very fortunate. Yes, there were lots of ups and downs in that first um, eight months, but um, very fortunate that the two years that she was on dialysis uh, three times a week, all was very yeah. um, straightforward. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me bring in transplant surgeon then, Pan Kaj Chandak, who's sitting alongside me here. Um, so, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the three, t the three d first of all, Chris was the perfect match in terms of a kidney transplant for Lucy. You came up with this idea of using a 3D printer to uh, 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 effectively build a replica of Chris's kidney, which is That's this, right, yeah. and Lucy's abdomen, which is this. That's right. Why would that help you ahead of the operation? Okay, well, um, firstly, we know that 3D printing technology has been used for lots of other specialities in medicine such as cardiac surgery or maxillofacial surgery or cancer surgery. Um, the problem that we face in transplantation is trying to place an adult sized kidney mm -hmm. into a small abdomen and Lucy's abdomen was about 10 kilograms. Okay, well why do you mind so show it, showing our audience yes, of course. exactly so, what you were trying to do? Yeah, so this is Lucy's abdomen, um, a print of her abdomen here. Yep. So this is the liver, you can mm -hmm. see that there. And that's quite <coughs> soft, we can move that back and then so that's, that's actually replicating the softness of an, a real liver? Well, uh, not exactly, but it's, 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 it's the, the next to. best thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. And then you've got the two kidneys here. Lucy's kidneys, you can see they're quite small. Tiny. Absolutely, yes. Um, yeah. And then you've got the major blood vessels in the abdomen here, yes. uh, the aorta and the inferior vena cava. And here you've got the bony pelvis, okay. which is actually printed in a, in a harder material as it would be in the human human body. Yep. So the printer essentially relies on information from CT scans and MR scans and then moulds liquid plastic essentially under UV light to create these models. Yep. And this is um, Chris's um, kidney, adult size. You can see the size discrepancy there and yep. essentially it's trying to place that in the appropriate position inside Lucy's abdomen. Okay. So, um, so essentially it helps us with not only um, planning that approach but thinking about our incision, um, how we're going to approach the vessels mm -hmm. and the best lie of the kidney inside the abdomen. Would you have been able to do this operation without uh, using the 3D printed models first? Yes, but the advantage of the model is that it allows a hands-on informative approach mm -hmm. uh, for the surgical team to essentially go through the procedure in their minds, um, actually physically manipulating the models um, in real time prior to the actual procedure itself. Mm -hmm. So that's the added advantage. It's an additional layer of safety that we can offer the patients Understood. for this complex type of surgery. Yeah, and Chris and Cara, you were obviously able to hold these models. What was that like? What, what, how did that help you with understanding how this operation was going to go? Uh, I, I was just astounded by it really. I mean, to, to, first to see the actual size of my kidney. I mean, I'd been, I'd been told in sort of tests beforehand and I'd seen scans and had an idea of what it, what it was, but to actually just see it in that 3D shape of what it was. And then also to see Lucy's abdomen you know, in an exact replica and, and, and size. It was just astounding. I mean, the 3D printing, it even prints right down to the sort of the uh, grain, if you like, of, of the kidney, the actual te texture, in a sense, around the side of it. So, I mean, it was just phenomenal seeing it and then being able to hold it and then hold it over Lucy's abdomen. You just, again, were thinking, how on earth can they fit this into this <laughs> um, abdomen, you know? And it just, again, it just highlighted... <coughs> even more just 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 how impressive what what they do yeah. really is i well, mean just, Kira, let me, you know, let's just ask, right. ask you Pankaj, how, how did you fit it in because the mm -hmm. way the way you're demonstrating in this now you you're having to move yes that's right so other organs yes. around so, 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 so the advantage is that we can move the liver out the way here yeah and then this is the side wall of the abdomen which we can move in here maybe if you want to just hold that up for me there yeah i can show you how we place the kidney so we essentially move the liver out the way here and then we place the kidney inside like that essentially mm -hmm. and join the vessels up like that mm -hmm. and obviously the bowel is in the way as well right. and we have to make sure that that's um, appropriately placed back and then we have to close the abdomen sometimes in very small children um, we may not be able to do that but in Lucy's case we were we, we were able to do that okay um, so that's the great advantage of the model because it helped us appreciate that anatomy prior Brilliant. to doing the surgery yeah. um, so I can see obviously that Lucy looks fab and is energetic and lively and all the rest of it tell us how she actually is from your point of view mum and dad um, she's brilliant. Um, she she has always had energy, 
you. But um, she has just boundless energy. She just jumps about the place or just kind of runs. Um, two big things before um, the surgery. Sorry, disappearing. Um, before the surgery for a child on dialysis, mm. she did continue to eat little bits but didn't eat very much. So most of her nutrition was going through her nasogastric tube. Um, so since the surgery with working kidney, she's started to eat. She's not quite eating all of her calorie requirements yet, but she's heading in that direction. Um, and it's just lovely to have her um, <laughs> <laughs> um, have her just be, be part of meals. And like we were able to take her out for her birthday for dinner, which in the past didn't really mean a whole lot to Lucy, but we were able to do that. Um, also, um, when, when you're on dialysis, um, your urea, one of your blood levels can be quite high and that can make you feel sick um, and and Lucy would have vomited generally at least once a day yeah. if not more and we were kind of trying to keep up with feeds um, and she's vomited once since the surgery wow. which obviously is so much better for her yeah. and um, yeah it makes life a whole lot better when you're not um, changing beds in the middle of the night and trying to chase feeds so um, that's two massive differences and then another huge one is that like last week for the first time since for the first time yeah. since she was four weeks old yeah. we were only at the hospital once whereas well she lived in hospital for eight months and then um, uh, she's been up and down to the hospital three times a week and then was obviously back in hospital for the transplant sure. so yeah massive change for her yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know what she's been so brilliantly behaved and she's just starting to get bored now I, I don't blame her. This is the longest. <laughs> Lucy, come here. It's, no, no, don't. It's people. fine, Chris. You don't. What honestly, did you get? she's cool. Don't. She wants <laughs> to go off. It's fine. <laughs> Listen, I'm so grateful for your Grant. time. It's really nice to talk to you, and I'm so happy for you all. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you. And again, we can't just express our our gratitude to to like the people right from right from the beginning in the Antrim area hospital to the people that treated her during that horrific day of heart failure in them. Um, the Royal in Belfast, to the Freeman in Newcastle, the RVI in Newcastle, and the, the Nidus machine, which was invented, and then because of Lucy got reinvented to take her on to the... It, it used to only work up until four and a half kilograms, mm -hmm. but because of Lucy and her getting to that place where if it, if it didn't, if the machine didn't change, she wouldn't live, yeah. they managed to redesign it so it can take a child to eight kilograms, right up to the, uh, the Royal in Belfast on dialysis, and again in Great Ormond Street, and the, and the phenomenal work with that 3D printout, and just just that, I mean, that helped put our mind at ease. Totally. Just seeing what what would be done, you know, and and, um, and just knowing as well, just the forward-thinking minds that there are, like like Pankash and, and like Malcolm Coulthard with that machine. We don't really think about it enough that in, in the NHS there are a lot of people here continually trying to work to make what they, the ways in which they can treat us, you know, better, and they do it honestly with such such little funding at times and have to really struggle to do it and get, and and it, the work is just phenomenal. Lucy, as you see with the temperature thing, I mean, Lucy, do you like hospital? Uh huh. She she has <laughs> had the, the the just. That's phenomenal. She's so happy. I mean, yeah. she smiled. R r she smiled right through it, and that's because of the the nurses and the staff and the way that they've been with her. Okay. I mean, she she gets excited whenever she's going into hospital, even though she's going in to get blood tests, which she hates. Yeah. She's walks out with a smile on her face you know so we really are so grateful i think and she, to wants, to go, she wants to go now chris she's got she's got a bag on she's ready she does, <laughs> she does. thank she does. you she's listen thank go. you so much bye bye lucy <laughs> bye bye, bye, -bye. Grand, thank you welcome. thank um, you bye Pankaj, thank you very much for coming on the program as well and okay. a great testament to you and your colleagues no, at no, hospitals around pleasure. the uk yes no, thank you uh, mika on twitter says lucy is an amazing little girl her parents are so strong right lots of comments as well from you on the conversation between the chair of the Culture Media